You ever have a religious friend send you some article or blog or something that they think is making a point on their side, but turns out to be a point on yours? It happens to me so often that I feel like I should have a name for it. Anyway, happened again this week with a Pew survey about religious messaging and vaccination. Of course, survey after survey shows that vaccination rates are lower among religious people than atheists and nuns. The worst offenders are white evangelicals, but pretty much every conceivable religious demographic is doing worse than us. Now, to some degree, yes, this is a byproduct of our group being more educated specifically in the field of science. But even when you account for that, most religious groups do significantly worse than atheists when it comes to getting the jab. Now, I've pointed this out a lot before. I help even before the vaccination was available. I wrote a book that pointed out that this shit was going to be a problem. And as more and more data have underscored the religion is the issue hypothesis, we've highlighted them on the show. So this show has somehow a few religious leaders that gam their way through the episodes every week. And and then they send me emails telling me how wrong I am about everything. So a couple of days ago, one of them sends me this Pew survey along with an explanation of what he thought it showed. Now, according to the survey, the vast majority of religious leaders that bring up vaccination in their sermons endorse it. Nearly eight times as many religious leaders urge their congregation to get the vaccine as urge them to avoid it. And like that, he presented to me as this great victory. Now, this fails to rise to the level of defense in a couple of different ways. The first is that that number is just disturbingly low. This is a no fucking brainer. You get the vaccine. Like if we found out that eight times as many teachers were telling kids that two plus two equals four as taught them it equals five, we wouldn't be reassured by those numbers. And nobody's going to die because of that. Like the, the, the number that should be urging against vaccination should be so close to zero. It doesn't show up on a fucking survey. But it's actually worse than that because the majority of religious leaders, according to this same survey, haven't brought it up at all. Can you fucking imagine? They're sermonizing their way through the most significant public health threat in any of our lifetimes and the many vaccines that could stop the pandemic in its tracks if they were taken by enough people just doesn't come up? Wait, wait, did they decide to go with something important and topical instead? But there's another important failure that's easy to lose behind those two because the number of Christians who personally endorse vaccination is nowhere near that eight to one number. So... Another major finding of the survey is just how fucking useless religious leaders are. Now, to be fair, I I should point out that the survey also asked participants who they would most trust for information about the COVID vaccine. And the only person who ranked higher than their religious leader was their primary care physician. But that's wildly undercut by the actual number. A feeble 61% that they'd have at least a fair amount of confidence in their guidance about the vaccine. It's, it, that's also a single percentage point higher than public health official, which somehow makes the statistic less significant and more frightening at the same time. And that, combined with the low levels of vaccination among religious people, makes you wonder what the fuck religious leaders even do. I mean, to the extent that religious leaders have brought up the vaccine, they've mostly endorsed it. So why aren't their congregants listening to them? Well, one of the main justifications religious apologists use for religion's existence is that it can help guide communities. But if the leadership is impotent, what good can it really do in that regard? Now, now let me be clear here, because the term leader gets used in two distinct ways, and it's important to make that distinction. right? So the atheist movement has leaders, too, but only in the sense that there are people who speak on behalf of atheism. Like the extent to which I'm a leader in the atheist community is exactly commensurate with the extent to which I put voice to your thoughts, right? Atheist leaders aren't really leaders so much as advocates. If I started pushing you this way or that, you'd be way more likely to give up on me and move to somebody who better aligned with your opinions than to change your opinions. Now, religious leaders don't serve the same function. I mean, in a sense, they do, or sometimes they do, especially in minority communities. And honestly, when they're doing that, I have no issue with them at all. But religious leaders are also supposed to function as teachers and guides. Like, you know, imagine how useless education would be if students had the option to just go to whatever teacher's lessons aligned with the shit they already knew. Right. So if you want to accuse me of holding them to a different standard than I hold us to, fair, guilty as fucking charged. But the teacher and the class president, they might both be leaders, but they should be held to different standards. And obviously, this role as teacher and guide isn't something that I'm tossing into their wagon. It's the very justification for their goddamn existence. 
It's the reason they have special tax deferments and legal privileges. It's the reason they've been forgiven from the general obligation of providing something beneficial for society. It's the reason terms like reverend, father, and rabbi are afforded social respect. So to whatever extent they're failing to move their congregations towards vaccination, they're failing to do their fucking jobs. And this survey, far from defending them, actually shows that even when they try, they fail. I I mean, look, if your employee's not getting his job done because he's napping in the break room, that's a problem you can fix by keeping a closer eye on him. If he's not getting his job done despite being at his desk and working hard at it, that motherfucker is hopeless.